Little Red Riding Hood. Oh dear, it's raining outside. Drip, drop, drip, drop, straight from the heavens onto the window. That's no good, says Lou as he looks gloomily out the window. No, says Lulu. Now we can't play outside. What now? Hey, Lulu, do you know a story maybe? Could you tell me one? Sure, Lou, I can do that. What do you think of the story of Little Red Riding Hood? What's a riding hood, Lulu? Well, it's a kind of hood, or a bonnet, or a hat. And guess what color Little Red Riding Hood's hood is? Red, shouts Lou. Exactly, and this is how the story goes. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Little Red Riding Hood. That was her name because she always wore a red bonnet. A beautiful red hood. And she always wore a red cape, too, whenever she went outside. Nice and warm. Red Riding Hood was always cheerful and very kind to everyone she met. She would skip around whenever she could and enjoyed all the beauty the world has to offer. One day, her mother asked her to take some treats to her sickly grandmother. She lived in a cottage on the other side of the woods. Naturally, Little Red Riding Hood was happy to do that. Then she'd be able to go outside and skip along the paths again. And see her grandmother, of course. Red Riding Hood took her basket full of delicious food and drinks and headed off to Grandma's. As soon as she was out the door, she peeked under the wicker basket lid. She smelled baked bread, saw a bright red jar of cherry jam, a bottle of fresh milk, and a bunch of grapes. A delicious meal for her sick grandmother to help her get better. Satisfied, she closed the basket and set foot on her way, off to Grandma's over the dirt path that led from her house toward the forest. First, straight ahead for a while, and then there was a bend, she remembered. The further she walked, the more trees there were all around her. Slowly, she walked into the woods. On her way, she came across many animals, and she greeted them all. Hello, bird. Hello, mole. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. How are you doing today? Hello, squeaky mouse, rustling around in the leaves. Hello, butterfly. Hello, owl. Hello, horse. And hello, fox. She greeted all the animals that live in the forest. Or, no... There was one she hadn't seen yet. The wolf. Until he suddenly popped up, straight out of the trees into the middle of the path, right before her very eyes. Growl! She stopped and politely greeted him. Hello, wolf. What a lovely day it is today. Wouldn't you agree? You're right about that, Little Red Riding Hood. It's a very lovely day indeed. The sun is shining, the trees are dancing, and I see a delicious snack, uh, uh, a sweet Red Riding Hood. Say, Little Red Riding Hood, where are you headed? Little Red Riding Hood told him about her sick grandmother, all the way on the other side of the woods. But that's quite far away, said the wolf. Just make sure you get there before dark. Otherwise, you'll be all alone in this great big forest. Little Red Riding Hood smiled, but got a bit of a funny feeling from this wolf. 
She said goodbye to him and walked on. In the meanwhile, the wolf had made his own plan. A very naughty plan. He ran ahead quickly upon a different path, directly to Grandma's house. He was actually rather hungry for a tasty old granny. His tummy had been growling for days. The wolf knocked on the door and said in a soft, sweet voice, Hello, Grandma, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood, and I have some tasty treats for you. Grandma thought that it was Red Riding Hood, so she opened the door. But instead of Little Red Riding Hood, she saw the wolf. Before she knew it, he stepped inside and swallowed Grandma up in one big gulp. But Lulu, grannies, can they just be eaten up like that? No, no, thankfully not, Lou. That only happens in stories. And luckily, this wolf learns his lesson. Just listen. It was almost evening when Little Red Riding Hood arrived at Grandma's house. But what did she see when she got there? The door was wide open. She stepped inside and called out to her grandmother. Grandma, Grandma, are you there? Yes, my child, here I am, she heard a strange voice reply. That didn't sound like her grandma at all. Perhaps she sounded so strange because she was sick. When Little Red Riding Hood entered the bedroom, she saw her grandmother's nightcap peeking out above the covers. There was her grandmother after all. But hey, what else did she see there? Under the cap was a big wolf's snout. And a pair of big wolf's paws were clutching the blankets. This wasn't her beloved grandmother. This was the wolf! The wolf had disguised himself as Grandma and tricked Little Red Riding Hood. He jumped out of bed and tried to swallow up Red Riding Hood just like he had done with Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood let out a scream so loud that the entire forest heard her. And in that forest, there walked a hunter. His attentive ears heard the sound as clear as day. Why, that's Little Red Riding Hood, he shouted in shock, and it's coming from Grandma's cottage. He started to run. Quickly, he arrived at the cottage and discovered the wolf in Grandma's clothing, hungry to eat up Little Red Riding Hood. Stop, he hollered, and he aimed his rifle at the wolf who stopped at once with his paws in the air. Hunter, I, I surrender, he said quickly. The hunter rescued Grandma from the wolf's belly. Ah, there she was. Grandma gave Little Red Riding Hood a big hug and thanked the hunter a thousand times over. The wolf had learned his lesson. He'd never eat people again when he was hungry. Disappointed and ashamed, he walked back into the woods to search for other treats to fill his empty stomach with. And, Little Red Riding Hood, said Grandma, do you understand now that it's important not to dilly-dally in the woods and that you can't just talk to strangers, just like your mother always says? Yes, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. I will never forget it ever again. And now, let's have a look at what kind of goodies you have in that basket, laughs Grandma, as they sit down together at the table to enjoy the feast. And so goes the fairy tale of Little Red Riding Hood. But Lulu, asks Lou, was this a big, bad wolf? Yes, Lou, 
This really was a big bad wolf. But luckily, he was really sorry and he'll never do it ever again. So, so he won't eat us up if we play in the woods? No, Lou, you can be sure he won't, because there are no big bad wolves here. Thank goodness, sighs Lou with a smile. Then in a bit, we can go outside and play. Look, the sun is shining again. <laughs> <laughs>